In, this ser in these series of videos, we're going to talk about quadratic equations and solving quadratic equations. Now, we're going to look at four different ways to solve quadratic equations. And you might be asking yourself, why do I need to know four different ways? Well, the reason for that is because they don't always work. Um, what a one particular method may not always work for what we're going to do, or there may be an easier way to do it. So it doesn't hurt to know more than one way. Um, before we get into solving, we want to talk about a def our definition of quadratic equations. So here I have a quadratic equation that is generally, it's given in its general form of ax squared plus bx plus c, where the a, the b, and the c are all real numbers, and my variable x in this case is only raised to the second power. That gives me a second degree polynomial equation. It also lets me know that if I have a second degree polynomial, then I'm going to have at most two solutions that I could be looking for. Now, specific to this video, we are going to concentrate on solving our quadratic equations by factoring. In order to, to solve this using this method, we're going to apply what we call the zero product principle. That principle says that if I have two factors that equal zero, then either factor A must be equal to zero or factor B must be equal to zero. And that is going to allow me to solve my equations by applying this property or this principle. So let's get started. The first one we're going to look at over here is 2x squared plus x is equal to 1. Now, when we apply this zero product principle, we have all of our terms on one side, and it's set equal to zero. So that's the format we are going to try to get this first one in. So I am going to subtract 1 over here to the left-hand side. I end up with 2x squared plus x minus 1 is equal to zero. And now I have what we um, know to be a trinomial, three terms, right? And this trinomial is similar to what you learned to factor back in Algebra 1 using trial and error. Now to do that, that was where we set up our parentheses and we try to break these three terms down into these sets of parentheses. Now I have kind of a method that I use when I do this, and that method is to first start by putting my parentheses down. Second thing I want to look at is this negative sign right here, this, the second sign in my trinomial. Since it is negative, I know that I have to have a positive and a negative both occurring down here in these sets of parentheses. And I don't know which one goes first. I don't know if it's positive, negative, or negative, positive. But I'm going to leave it like that. Now this, this next spot is where we're going to take the first term of my trinomial and break it up into its factors of 2x and x. Because I know that 2x times x gives me back 2x squared. So these are the factors that give me back what I started with. And the last thing I need to put in is my last term, the factors of my last term. Well, there aren't many. There's only a 1 and a 1. Those are the only factors of 1. Most students don't have a problem getting it to this point right here. Where students tend to make a mistake, however, is do, my, do I have my signs right? In other words, um, can I get back the middle term? Okay, so it's the middle term, and if you think foil, right? Because if I were to multiply these two binomials together using foil, the O and the I out of foil gives me back the middle term of my trinomial. So that's the part we're going to check. So I have a 2x times a negative 1. So this is negative 2 plus 1. Well, that doesn't give me positive 1, does it? Negative 2 plus 1 is not positive 1. So I have my signs wrong. So let's just go in and change the signs. Check our middle terms. This time I have plus 2 minus 1. That does give me back the 1 I need. So I know that I have this factored right, and I can move on by applying the zero product principle. 
Again, it said if I had two factors that were set equal to zero, then either of those factors or each of those factors are going to now be set equal to zero. So we take the first factor, 2x minus 1 equals zero, the second factor equal to zero, and we solve both of these equations. The leftmost equation is solved by adding one to the right-hand side, 2x is equal to 1. Now we divide both sides by 2 and I find out that x is equal to 1 half. Here for this second equation we subtract 1 to the right hand side and I find that x is equal to 1. So these are the two solutions and I can write these solutions in their set notation using the set bars to include a negative 1 and 1 half. Those are the solutions to this quadratic equation. And it made sense for me to come up with or for me to end up with two uh, possible so or two solutions to this quadratic. Now let's look at this example over here. This is 5x squared minus 20x equals 0. And we already know that we are going to solve this by factoring. But notice that in this particular setup, I do have all of my terms on one side set equal to zero, so that is a positive. But I only have two terms here. That is an indication that I cannot um, do trial and error factoring like what we tried to do over here. Instead, what we want to think, since I only have two terms here, is I want to think greatest common factor to factor out, GCF, okay? And if I look at these two terms here, is there a, a number and or variable that is common to both of these terms? Well, yes, there is. 5x is common to both of those terms. So when I factor 5x out or divide both of these terms by 5x, I'm left with x minus uh, negative 20x divided by 5x is a 4, and that's equal to 0. So this is a different form of factoring. This is factoring using GCF, but what did I get? I have two factors equal to 0, and I can have multiple factors equal to 0, but I'm going to take each of the factors and now set them equal to 0 to solve. Over here on the left, when I divide both sides by 5, I get x is equal to 0. And when I add 4 to the right-hand side, I get x is equal to 4. So here we can see that the solution set would be 0 and 4 for my, uh, for my solutions to this quadratic function. Now, this method that we are talking about in this video, this solve by factoring method, is the first method that we typically try to use in order to solve quadratic equations. We are the most familiar with it. It's generally the easiest one, but it doesn't always work because we may not be able to factor this or we may not have a greatest common factor. So this method is definitely the one that I'm going to try first, but it's not always going to work, so I need to have some other options. And that's what we're going to uh, and that's why we learned to solve by factoring.